with another video and today I want to talk about three teams that I think might be playoff pretenders and what I mean by that is three teams that might shock some people and underachieve come playoff time and I wanted to start with the team that I'm really concerned about but not as concerned about as two of the other teams I want to talk about and that first team is the Miami Heat now the Miami Heat we all know are dogs on defense they might have the best team defensively in the entire league they got dogs one through five. They can switch everything. They got rim protection. They got perimeter defense. They can do it all defensively. I'm not really worried about that other than the Tyler Hero aspect of the defense. And that's the only thing that worries me a little bit is that over this last skid that they've been on, I've seen a lot of teams kind of attack Tyler Hero on defense when they get the switch. I've seen Jordan Poole, Tyrese Maxey, a lot of other guards just attack that matchup whenever they get Tyler Hero switched onto them and that's one thing that kind of concerns me a little bit they might have to find a way to hide hide Tyler Hero on defense maybe hide him in the corner on a non-shooter somebody like that um, but overall I'm not too concerned about the Miami Heat on defense they're they're gonna be fine on that end the offense though is a separate matter that concerns me a lot and the reason I say that, they've been a fine offensive team. Obviously, they've been missing their guys for certain stretches this year. But overall, they've been solid offensively. However, in the playoffs, as we all know, everything slows down. There's no more transition. or Not, uh, not no more, but there's not nearly as much transition offense. A lot of it is in the half court. And especially in crunch time, when the going gets tough, when defenses start to clamp down, when possessions are shorter, everything like that, the Miami Heat's offense really concerns me. When you look at the Eastern Conference, you look at the contenders uh, throughout that t throughout that conference. You look at the Philadelphia 76ers, Milwaukee Bucks, Brooklyn Nets, all those teams, even teams that aren't really top of the heat contenders like the Atlanta Hawks, Chicago Bulls. Those guys have firepower offensively. They have guys that you are willing to give the ball to and say, please go get me a bucket. And they can do just that. They can make tough shots in the half court contested. It doesn't matter. Hand in their face. They can make those shots. Trey Young, KD. Joel Embiid, Chris Middleton, Jim, uh, uh, DeMar DeRozan, the list goes on. For Miami, however, I don't really see anybody on that team that I'm willing to trust in crunch time to just get a bucket. And that's what they're going to need. They're going to be in a lot of tightly contested games down the stretch where they just need to score the ball. And I know that sounds really simple, like it's a simple fix, but it's not. They, they really don't have firepower offensively like these other teams. And I'm not really willing to rely on Tyler Hero uh, to get the job done for them. And I know Jimmy Butler in the past has shown the ability to do that, to get tough buckets. But this year especially, he has been really, really bad shooting the ball overall. I don't think teams are afraid of him shooting the three-pointer at all. And when that mid-range, which is where Jimmy Butler used to make his bread and butter, when that is not falling, He's pretty ineffective offensively. Uh, yeah, he can play make. He's a pretty. He's a really good passer. But but when he when you got when you need somebody to just go get a bucket, Jimmy Butler has not done that this year. And I'm not. I'm pretty worried about that for that team specifically. I don't think Kyle Lowry can get the job done in that aspect. And I don't think you can rely on Tyler Hero. He can do it, but to the level of those other guys, I'm not sure. So that is the biggest concern with me come playoff time. And I know it sounds like a small one, but it's a big one because in the playoffs, man, you're going to need guys just to get buckets, to score the ball when when everything slows down and everything is tight. When there's four minutes left tie game, you just need your stars to score for you. I just don't trust Jimmy Butler, Bam Adebayo, Kyle Lowry. I don't trust their ability to score from anyone on the floor. And that's a really, really big concern for me with the Miami Heat. However, their defense could be enough, could be enough to get them over the hump. I just don't see it. Uh, so that's it for the Heat. Moving on to a team that I'm a little more concerned about, and that is the Philadelphia 76ers. Now, the Philadelphia 76ers have been, and, and let, me just, let me just start this by saying yes, I know in my previous video I said I might have them coming out of the East. That has changed. That was after only the first five games. I should have waited out. I should have waited for them to face tougher comp competition. And uh, I have not liked what I've seen from them. Uh, they've been just really, really, really inconsistent. And most of it is on the shoulders of James Harden. Uh, he's been really bad uh, at times. And I know Doc Rivers has said he wants them to be aggressive. He wants them to look to score. But when that has been the case and when James Harden has been aggressive in looking for his own shot, it hasn't really yielded the results I thought it would. And uh, maybe that's his hamstring. Maybe that's his age. I don't know personally what that is but 
it really doesn't look good when when James Harden is trying to create for himself and one of the things I've said in my previous video about the Sixers and why it would be so hard to guard that pick and roll between him and Joel is because if you want to trap James Harden then you have Joel Embiid kind of in the middle of the paint and that's either two points or a foul every time which has proven the case it, ha it has been the case for that whenever they trap James Harden Joel Embiid is either getting fouled or putting the ball in the basket however I said when you switch that then you got an advantageous situation for James Harden and Joel Embiid because you got a mismatch on both sides however James Harden hasn't really held up his end of the bargain in that aspect he has not shown the ability in isolation to get the job done as well as I thought he would be and that scares me especially come playoff time he looks slow and a lot of the times he's either turning the ball over uh, trying to get to the basket and flailing his arms in the air and using the ball as a weapon to try to draw contact It's not looking good or he's wasting the entire shot clock and chucking, chucking up a brick And neither of those are good outcomes for a James Harden isolation and not what I'm used to seeing from him But that really concerns me come playoff time uh, A lot of people like to complain about the foul calls that both he and Joel Embiid get The, the Joel Embiid foul calls are not going to change come playoff time that he's going to get the same calls James Harden is not and the transition defense is already as bad, uh, really bad for the Sixers. And it, it really doesn't need to get any much wor any worse than that. And when James Harden is sitting there after the turnover complaining to the refs, it's just not a recipe for success. So I'm really worried about James Harden, especially in isolation. I'm not worried about his passing. He's a great facilitator, even with whatever he's dealing with right now. He's still a great facilitator, but I don't really trust his ab ability to get high percentage shots for himself in the playoffs. And that's a really, really big concern. The other big concern for me, and I've said this multiple times, Doc Rivers is a terrible coach, and it has nothing to do with the on-floor, the play of his guys. It has nothing to do with that. It's the rotations and the in-game adjustments that I'm scared of. We all remember last year in the playoffs, Tyrese Maxey saved their ass in Game 6 against the Atlanta Hawks, and he played him for one minute in Game 7. And if you don't know what I'm talking about when I'm talking about rotation, that's the one thing that I can point to and say, there it is. It's the perfect summation of Doc Rivers' man as a coach. He's terrible when it comes to adjusting. And his rotations, he still hasn't figured out whether he wants to stagger Joel Embiid and James Harden's minutes or play them with the bench. It's still He still hasn't figured it out. He keeps flip-flopping, and it's really creating a lot of issues for that team when it comes to consistency because they haven't really been able to solidify a rotation that they're willing to stick with. Uh, so that really concerns me as well. And then the final thing is the bench production for the Sixers. They're 30th in the league. They're last in the league when it comes to bench scoring post-All-Star break, a.k.a. post-James Harden trade. And that's really all you need to know. That's not a good bench at all. They have no good backup for Joel Embiid that I'm willing to trust in the playoffs. And it's just, it's, it, it doesn't look like a good situation in Philly. Can they get by based on Joel Embiid and the talent that they have? Yeah, but it's going to be really, really tough, especially if they're forced to play a defense like the Bucks or the Heat. So that's the Sixers. And the last team that I'm really, really, really concerned about is the Utah Jazz. <sighs> Before the season started, you, I would not have believed you if you said the Utah Jazz would be sitting at sixth in the Western Conference behind the Denver Nuggets and only one and a half games up on the play-in spot Timberwolves. I would not have believed you. They are underneath the Denver Nuggets who are missing two of their three best players. It has been a terrible season for the Utah Jazz, and it really looks like a dead-end situation. I don't see this team coming back from this. Um, and there's just issues all over the place. Defensively, I know a lot of people like to scapegoat Rudy Gobert, which is unfair. He is the only reason that defense is near where it is, which is still, I think, top 10 in the league. With all their perimeter issues, they are a terrible team when it comes to defending the perimeter. And it causes so much problems because they can't switch anything because nobody can hold their own on a switch. So Rudy Gobert is constantly having to drop back and pick and roll. And when you play a team like the Warriors, who they just collapsed to and gave up an 18-0 run in three minutes, when you play a team like that that can shoot the ball and you can't play drop coverage, they're not beating that team. They're not going to beat those teams. And the same thing happened to the Clippers, uh, to them against the Clippers a few nights ago. The Jazz are just a terrible, they're in a terrible spot right now. The defense looks like shit. <laughs> and like I said, it's not really Rudy Gobert's fault. It's just that outside of him, they don't have any other good defenders. And then offensively is a whole nother issue because offensively, they don't trust each other. They don't trust each other at all. You have Donovan Mitchell out there playing hero ball. I'm talking about hero ball, just keeping the ball to himself. Jordan Clarkson doing the same thing. I still don't like Jordan Clarkson. Uh, as I know he's a sixth man of the year. I just... I really don't like uh, the way he plays. Um, but again, on top of that, they're missing Rudy Gobert in these advantageous situations. And I bring up one 
uh, example against the Warriors a few nights ago, he was in the paint stealing Klay Thompson, who is seven inches shorter than him, and the Utah Jazz just ignored him, ignored him. And Donovan Mitchell was playing hero ball, trying to force up these terrible shots. Offensively, they don't trust each other, and in the locker room is a whole nother issue. It's because they, they're sitting there, post-game press conferences, pointing fingers at each other. Donovan Mitchell saying the defense got to be better. Rudy Gobert is saying we need to move the ball on offense. It, it's it's just complete dysfunction with that team, and that's never never what you want heading into the playoffs. And I'm just really really concerned about this team. Uh, I, I I don't see a, t- a team that they're beating in the top four in the Western Conference. I don't think they can beat the Grizzlies. I don't think they can beat the Warriors. I don't think they can beat the Suns. I don't think they can beat the Dallas Mavericks. I think best case scenario they get matched up with uh, the Denver Nuggets and they get past that. But I, I, I don't see this team getting out of the first round if they have to play one of those top four teams. And that's just something I never thought I would say uh, before the season, but it's just been that bad for the Utah Jazz. And like I said, man, I think this is a dead-end situation. I think this is the last time we see this version of the Utah Jazz. Um, I think they're blowing it up after this year. I think uh, I just don't think they like each other. <laughs> as simple as it sounds, I really don't think they like each other in that locker room. And uh, it's it's unfortunate. Donovan Mitchell's only 25 years old. It's unfortunate. But it really looks like that's the direction we're heading in for the Utah Jazz. Uh, but yeah, that's it for me. Uh, those are the three teams I'm really, really concerned about come playoff time. I don't think that I would put my money on them to make it out of either conference. And um, yeah, guys, let me just let me know your thoughts uh, down below in the comments. Let me know if you agree, if you think that the Heat can get out of the East, if you think the Sixers can get it out of the East, or if you think the Jazz can clean up this situation that they're in right now. Let me know in the comments. But as always, leave a like, subscribe, and I'll be back with more very, very soon. Thank you. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.